we're sitting in Mashtots Park, which is now called Misak Manushyan Park. Uh, we decided to come here today with you because this has become a symbolic place in Yerevan. Um, and due to the fact that you seem to get beaten up quite often <laughs> in the middle of the night by unknown assailants uh, for your, I don't know, for your activism, for your voice, for the things you need to say. Um, what does Mashtots Park mean to you, mean for you? It's one of the liberated like plot spaces in Yerevan and many people uh, not depending from their uh, views, political views, and just common people who are just not in, were, no, they were not interested in poli politics before that. They were like gathering here and trying to defend this space. And uh, I'm very proud of my uh, compatriots, comrades, uh, comrades, compatriots, <laughs> compatriots <laughs> that. Uh, they finally got this place and now we are sitting in this very nice place, uh, nice view and children playing here and uh, lots of citizens are walking here and spending their evenings here. So. Yeah, because it adds uh, to the quality of our lives when we have public spaces which are so well kept um, and that do provide a place for you know mothers to come with their children and parents to come and grandparents to bring their grandchildren. But more than being a pretty spot, like you said, it, 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 it is a place that was liberated, if we can call it like that. You have been active in Armenian movements, social movements, perhaps indirectly or directly. Um, what is it that, why do you feel so passionate about being part of that? What is it that you want to see? So uh, maybe I'll go back uh, to my short part of my bi biography. Like in 2004, uh, before that I was working for the government. Uh, work, I worked for the Minister of Foreign Affairs, for the Minister of Education and Science, uh, for the staff of the Prime Minister. And in 2004 I understood that I can't be there anymore. And just moved into the civil society sector and uh, started to work for Birthright Armenia, uh, which, which uh, till now the organization, the foundation is bringing young Armenians from diaspora to be here, to be part of the life of Armenia here, uh, to experience the routine life of Armenians here, to work here, to learn the language. So I like that job very much and uh, Finally, I understood that uh, the civil society sector is very important uh, for building democracy in this country. Not only here, but everywhere. And it can be a watchdog uh, and monitor like, uh, the developments in the political life, in the economy, fight against corruption, uh, like defending human rights, to be a balance. Uh, between the society and between the government, between the power, and uh, try to do something. Uh, how long, I mean, Birthright is a great organization. Um, so you worked there for a number of years? Yeah, uh, six years. And that also gave you an insight, I presume, on the mentality of the diaspora, because you were probably dealing with diaspora and Armenians every day. Yeah, <laughs> every minute, every minute. <laughs> I would say. Yeah, but before that uh, I was working uh, on the co different concepts on how to involve uh, diaspora and Armenians from abroad into the Armenian life when I was working for the state institutions. And this was the birthright experience was, for me was a hands-on just experience and uh, I was observing and exploring uh, young people and uh, it was very interesting to see how, uh, how they think, how they uh, treat Armenia, what they uh, Their think perceptions. About. Yeah, their perceptions and I tried to, uh, with my friends, of course, uh, to do uh, my best to involve them in, this, uh, in the life of their homeland. 
And do you see value in that? Is it? I mean, oftentimes we talk about this, you know, uh, sort of grassroots movements, understanding what the process is taking place in Armenia. Uh, the diaspora connection, how important is that to help that grassroots uh, movements, those um, people who are involved in civil society? Could there be a connection there? Sure. Uh, I would say, I can say just one sentence about that. I would be very happy if uh, in Armenia we can have, have for example, 15,000 Syrian, Ar Syrian Armenians and uh, so that they can live here, uh, start a business and they can, ch they can be a, a kind of subculture and uh, if we, we would have like, I don't know, maybe 10 different subcultures from different countries, it would change a lot here. Uh, coming back to the scar right here. Yeah. <laughs> I have one inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, after, after getting beaten up, you may as well have the scars on the inside, too. Um, you know, that, that, that was a violent act against you and, and a friend of yours. Um, and it was taking place at a time when, uh, last year, when the, the city was boiling. There was a lot of things happening, you know, from the 100 and 150 Dara movement with the bus fare hikes, uh, to the sit-ins at City Hall. Uh, how does that impact you? I think I'm more strong right now. But uh, from the other side, after that attack, and I was not alone with my friend, with Suren Salatelian, uh, and I'm not taking that, first of all, personally, because it was a message to the whole civil society, uh, first. And second, uh, I think Unfortunately, uh, some people, they stayed back uh, after that because... It was a scare tactic. Yeah. And it's just a tactic of KGB of 60s and they, uh, 70s is the same. Uh, that's very sad for, uh, to me because currently the government, the authorities, they use the old methods of the Soviet time and sometimes it helps. But uh, for me, I was born and uh, grew up in the family of a dissident and uh, that's why since when I was three years old my father came to me and showed me a newspaper printed abroad it was uh, the the Rorschach newspaper oh okay and uh, there was an this was that was a anniversary something uh, edition and he showed me the uh, coat of arms and the flag of Armenia of the first republic and said uh, look it, it was our state but don't please uh, please don't tell anyone about this <laughs> <Agree? laughs> yeah and I didn't by the way <laughs> is this the first time you've been yeah <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I was I'm involved in such kind of things yeah. since <laughs> three years old yeah. Um, do you have, do you have hope? Of course, if not, I won't be here. Because it's easy to leave. And uh, it's not, you know, I won't say it's a hope. I think I'm more than sure that uh, we can, uh, we can have better country. Because with hope, Living with hope is bad. Yeah, hope is not a plan, right? You need to have a plan. You need to have a vision <laughs> and work. Uh, right, and I think the biggest problem that we have as a nation, Armenians living in Armenia, Armenians living in the diaspora, uh, sometimes we lack that vision of what we want and how we plan on getting that. And uh, maybe it's through conversations like this that we begin to formulate those plans, I don't know. Because we don't know each other, that's the problem. Uh, Diasporans coming to Armenia as a tourist, it's not coming back to Armenia. They come here, so many of them just come to Armenia as they, will go, they would go to Crimea or <laughs> Crimea. Some, yeah, somewhere else. Uh, because for me, the most important thing is the people-to-people -people contact and relations. Otherwise, if you are here for uh, some, uh, how to say that, uh, 
for business, I don't know, to see your relatives, it's not a contact. But uh, you need to think wider and Armenians here and diasporans there and try to know each other, try to explore, explore each other and understand the needs and create a common ground and uh, develop a great vision. You know, for me, life sort of began after 1991, um, which is crazy, but I mean, sometimes I feel like our lives began after independence. Uh, at least perhaps for me, that's how, how I feel. Uh, and in those 22, 23, 24 years that have, you know, from the Gharapak movement uh, forward, you've been involved, like you said, in state structures and civil society. Uh, you've worked in organizations that, you know, bring diasporans to Armenia. So you've had a really sort of wide range of experiences uh, in your adult life. And now you're also involved in, in some Armenia-Turkey um, projects. Why? And you know, we are now just ahead of the hundredth anniversary of the Armenian genocide uh, in 2015. Why is that important for you as well? No, as you mentioned, uh, I've got just uh, different experience from different positions, and I'm historian, by the way. I got my PhD when I was 25. Later on. Uh, I worked for the government, governmental institutions, later on I worked for Birthright and then I started my uh, work at Yerevan Press Club as a media expert which, which was a great experience for me as well, like a new field uh, and uh, now I'm working for the Regional Studies Center and uh, doing researches and at the same time coordinating that uh, consortium program, Armenia Turkey Normalization program. Uh, it's not. Uh, I've been involved in Armenia-Turkey projects since 2010 uh, in three very big projects. By the way, different kinds. Uh, different. One was media. The other one was uh, media and culture. This one is more track one and a half than track two. <laughs> track so, one and a half. Yeah, because. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And. Uh, as I already mentioned, for me, uh, the most important thing uh, is people-to-people -people relations and also my position is that uh, opening the borders and establishing the diplomatic relations between two countries will be, can be a very good start for everything. Because uh, we don't know people in Turkey and living with stereotypes and using, by the way, cliches and like, <laughs> uh, and it goes both ways. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, the it's the there. same for them, sure. But uh, yeah, from Turkey's side, uh, they have one more weakness, which is uh, their history is erased. And now people, when uh, young people, especially when they hear that uh, they are not like 100% Turks, their ancestors were from. Uh, they may be Greek blood or they have uh, Syriac blood or Armenian blood or Jewish blood and now they are trying to find out their identity and uh, we need to help them by the way yeah to first of all uh, to explore themselves and later on uh, us as well so these kinds of projects uh, I think are very important and I have I don't uh, won't, won't say like hundred but maybe several dozen friends in Turkey and I'm not going to say that they are Turkish because uh, some of them they are Turkish people some of them that there are people from Turkey or citizens of Turkey uh, who don't know still who they are and at least we kind of sort of know. Yeah. yeah. Which is a good thing. <laughs> and uh, talking about knowing and understanding, let's take a walk over and look at what the, the activists of Mashtots Park placed here once they liberated the park. Okay, let's go. Let's go. So, they did this themselves. Oh, yeah, it's the activists. They yeah. And did you have a problem with the renaming of Misak Manushyan? Because Misak Manushyan, I mean, 
I mean, seriously, uh, the, the, I think it's very symbolic. He w was part of the French uh, resistance movement. He was shot by the Nazis. I mean, there okay, was a huge we have connection, like right? A dozen of parks in Yerevan, like two at least in right in the center of Yerevan. Mm -hmm. Bigger parks, by the way. And they could have go and rename. I don't have anything against Misak Manushan, of course. He was a hero and a great person and uh, the, one of the leaders of the resistance mm -hmm. in France. But uh, renaming this park especially, it's, it's just a politics, which I don't, don't like. Yeah. But perhaps it was because of the lack of communication or transparency. They didn't come to those people who were so actively involved in liberating this park. I mean, if there had been that kind of communication, yeah, and, and, and I also blame Europeans, especially the French embassy in Yerevan, mm. because they knew the whole story, I'm sure, and they didn't send any message to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, to the government of France, that, you know, guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just go for another park. Because the activists who met with uh, the French president, Francois Hollande, that day, he had no idea of that course. there was a controversy involved. Sure, yeah. sure. Otherwise, he won't come here. You're right, you think so? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, hi, Gag. Thank you so much. For Welcome. This Thanks for inviting. Beautiful morning here in Yerevan and talking to us about your thoughts and your life. But it was just, you know, a very short part of my life. <laughs> uh, then maybe we meet up with you <laughs> and we continue this conversation. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.